Hey, what's up guys, Nate here. Welcome back to Sonic Academy. Now today we are checking out Bitwig 5.3. The latest update is out in beta now with a bunch of really cool new features, which we're gonna take a look at. Let's dive straight in and check this out. Right, so let's dive straight into the sort of big features uh, with 5.3 and that's probably stepwise and the new drum modules. We'll take a look at the drum modules first. You can load these up onto drum machine pads to create your own drum kits from these new synthesized drum modules. There are three new sets that have been added. So the V1s are the original uh, E-hat and E-kick, etc. They've been renamed to the V1 modules. The V0 is a digital drum kit, a synthesized digital drum kit. The other ones may seem a little bit more familiar. The V8, which is, of course, the 808. Uh, and then you've also got the V9, of course, a 909 drum kit. Now, all of these are kind of essentially the different flavors of the original um, e-drum modules inside of Bitwig. This is the old school ones, just you know, it's the old interface. Uh, we'll just take a look at a few, we'll mix and match a few of these together. We can take, say, for instance, the 909 kick here and each one of them will have uh, various different parameters that you can tweak. I have some uh, effects in here saved by default. Of course, these are based on the ones that you're using, but if, for instance, you have dials for the punch, for example, you can adjust the shape, buzz, compression on that, the click, of course, the decay and tuning. For instance, if we were to bring in uh, another one here, let's go with the V8 clap, for example. Again, number of different controls that you have for, for this. And these are very, very handy. I really like the hats in particular. Uh, even the old hi-hat was really good. You can get sort of very nice wide uh, sounding hats for this, especially when you start dialing in more of the the noise, of course, this is the old one. We can take a look at the V8, for example. Also has a noise slider that you can use. And maybe just take a look at the V9 open hat as well. Classic 909 hat. They're very easily customizable to get exactly the sound that you want. Uh, I've actually been using these loads um, since this came out, especially the hats, like I said. Of course, this being Bitwig, everything here can be modulated and really leveraged to get sort of very interesting sounding uh, stuff out of these drum modules. But what's more interesting for me is the new Stepwise uh, MIDI module that we can load up before a drum machine. And this is a sequencer. I mean, you've got this old school um, step sequencer for drums. Um, one thing that I really like about this, which has not been possible in the past with the regular drum machine, is that you're now able to do polymeters really very easily with this. Uh, so previously, if you were going to do that inside of a drum part here, and you were working with various different things, let's say you had your kick, for example, here, yeah, um, and you wanted say, for instance, a tom part to be something that was a polymeter, for example, and I wanted that, and I wanted this section to be not in a sort of 4-4 four, four timing. Um, I would have to actually separate those out to have them run at a different time signature, whereas now it's very, very simple. We can actually just do, let's say, if we'll program on our kick there, we can reduce this to just 4, for example, yeah? Which will give us 4-4. Four, four. Uh, but we can then go and just grab something like the tom that we had there. We can dial in the tom pattern. And let's just go to something like 11. Now we're getting really nice sort of polyrhythms happening here. There you go. They've also just in the latest beta update added a few additional features here as well. You can now decide if you want to output pulse or uh, or trigger or gate signals. Uh, the gates are useful because you can actually trigger synths with this as well. It's not limited to doing drum machine stuff. I'll show you what you can do with that in just a sec. Uh, you also have the option to use MIDI channels here. Uh, we can also randomize everything and we can flip everything, reverse it, or essentially turn, um, toggle on and off for all of them, so what's on becomes off, and what's off becomes on. 
Um, and we can also remove everything pretty quickly. Uh, you can select different drums here. You can also layer these together just by doing this and then actually moving these um, root notes up. You can get the second uh, section of drum pads there if you really need that. You also have some control over the velocity sensitivity and the accents that you can put in here by holding down Alt. Uh, you can accent and add regular hits inside of your drum patterns. Uh, now, like I said, you don't necessarily have to be doing this with drum patterns. You could, for instance, use this in front of just a regular synth. Now, the interesting thing here is that it outputs the note values that you have here. So you could have notes playing a melody here, for example. Do something like that. like that. Of course, once again, you can go with polymeters again. You can experiment with this kind of thing. You can also change up the time signatures completely and have these in sixteenths or eighths or, or what have you. Uh, and then the other interesting thing that you can do with this as well is to actually split up the lines into different controller data. So what's interesting with this as well is if we decide to use MIDI channels, it'll split these into different MIDI channels for each one of these uh, sections here. You can then go into the modifiers selection here and choose the channel 16. So this gives you a control for each one of the separate MIDI channels coming in. Uh, we can then use this to actually change various settings in our synth, for example. Everything from sync parameters to what have you. I mean, that's a pretty horrible sounding riff that we have there, but uh, I quite like this idea of splitting these up into different channels. You could then actually uh, essentially bring these all down to C1 if you wanted to, and use this as just kind of a, or perhaps just keep them in octaves. Um, uses just as a means to trigger different controls on your synths. It's pretty interesting that now. Let's change the timing again. Getting some pretty interesting movement there now with that. So yeah, lots to experiment with here. It doesn't have to be used for a drum sequencer all around. Very, very cool uh, tool, this stepwise. Definitely a great addition to the collection of note effects inside of Bitwig. Now, before we move on from drum programming, they have actually added a, a bunch of support for some other controllers as well. I've been test driving the Novation Launch Key Mark IV series. Uh, Novation sent me one of these, and I've been really impressed with the integration that Bitwig has put in. Uh, this is without running any external or third-party scripts. And currently, I can lift this up for you. Currently, you see we have our drum machine selected here. You can run through your different channels, um, drum pads. You can scale, because I'm in drum mode right now, you can scale through your different drums. You can use that as a controller for that. Uh, but holding down shift and going to the DRW mode, uh, they've done a really good job of integrating the sequencer. So we can actually go back into that and have a sequencer mode now. If we uh, go down an octave, we can start selecting our drums from there. And now it's very quick and easily, you'll notice as I hit this, it's gonna automatically create a drum part for me. Selecting your drums. It's a really, really nice integration that they have with that now. Uh, I'd highly recommend checking these out if you are in the market for a controller. They've done a great job of this, and I think that sequencer. Uh, integration alone is worth the, I think, $140 price tag or $160 price tag for the little mini um, controller like I have here. Cool, moving on, uh, another really cool feature, uh, a very simple one, which I've been hoping that they would implement for ages, and I wish that they would actually roll this over to MIDI as well. But they've got this little record button now, which is sort of a global project recording that you can hit at any given time. This is really, really nice for when you are experimenting with stuff in the grid, for example. Uh, just right off the bat, if we have this playing, for example, at any time I can just do that. And there you go. 
come down to your master recording here. Uh, I'll just hit play. And that's what I was noodling around with before. Saved there, and it's just very, very easy to get to. There's no sort of looping or, or creating new channels or anything, or setting up an audio channel. Just hit record. Whatever's coming out of the speakers is going to get recorded there. Uh, and now, of course, you can bring that into a channel here to be played around with further. Let's say, for instance, um, you do something in the grid or whatever, a nice texture or whatever. You can then bring that into the sampler very quickly and easily and start playing around with things like the texture mode. So yeah, just a quick example of what you could do with that recording function. I think that's a really great addition. I would just like to see a retrospective MIDI recording like that as well, where you could just, as you do in Cubase, hit the retrospective recording button and whatever you've been playing uh, is being dumped into a buffer constantly that just gets pulled into your track. Right, so there's also been a few new additions to the grid as well. Uh, I won't go through all of them. The dome filter, which is one, I haven't quite got my head around this one yet. Um, it basically splits up a signal and outputs a whole bunch of phase signals, uh, but I have not quite grasped what's going on with this one yet. Of course, at any time, you can obviously in bring up the module help by just pushing F1. Um, but this one I need to still play around with to kind of figure out what is going on here. Uh, that said, there are some other cool modules like the pitch shift, which they've now added, um, which is very cool to play around with. So you have a pitch shift, and obviously you can play around with the grains. So you have the grain rate. If we stop mixing that into our dry signal, you get some interesting effects as well. There's also a number of modulation options here as well. I mean, you can use LFOs to mod obviously modulate the pitch as well, but the phase of the pitch shifter as well gives you some very interesting tones. So this would be your pitch. And take a listen to what happens if we uh, do something with the phase input, yeah? Let's disable that. And we'll output a sine wave into the phase input of the pitch shifter. So interesting ideas that you can play around with there. Some very, very nice gritty tones coming out of that right now. Uh, obviously, this will be fantastic in the FX grid as well. Um, you can build some pretty complex um, effects with pitch shifting. The other one that's available now is also the Freak Shift Plus, which is kind of the other new module that comes with 5.3. Uh, in a similar fashion, this is frequency shifting rather than pitch shifting. Again, some interesting options that you have here. What I do like about this one as well is you can actually offset the left and right so you can get quite nice stereo effects with this too. <laughs> So one last uh, module that I really like uh, that they've added in the grid now is the step access module, uh, which gives you, I think this is something that's been missing for ages, uh, it gives you really easy access to controlling the phase of, uh, or, or the sort of um, timing for uh, phase modules or phase driven modules, for example. Uh, for instance, if we want to go and put in something like the triggers module or the you have the accents one now as well, uh, which obviously is taken straight out of Stepwise. 
uh, also really nice to have. But if we're taking something just something simple like the gates module, for example, it was quite hard sometimes to get sort of odd time signatures and so on. Uh, with this one now, if we plug that in and just disable the uh, the pre chord and we can do this now. You can see it's actually resetting at four because I currently have a length of four set there. We can very easily adjust this now to say I go for five out of the eight. Let's change this to triggers. So now I'm getting five steps out of that eight, which is very cool to have. It's very easy to do that now, as before it was a lot more complicated to do this kind of thing. It's also very easy now to change up the phase signal from an eighth note, for example, and go straight to a sixteenth. Still got the five notes, five out of eight. You can play around with timing of things a lot more easily now with this. Uh, and of course, you can combine these as well um, to drive different components. Uh, let's say, for instance, if we were going to do very basic, let's just put in noise and a sample and hold here. Uh, we'll run this through a quantizer. Uh, let's just bring in an attenuator. We'll run this into the picture. And we could have a totally different uh, timing for these now. Uh, let's go with seven to generate our pitch for this. We're we going to have that trigger the sample and hold. match it up. Quickly switch over to something like a triplet, for example. Yeah, so super simple little module that, but very, very, very handy when it comes to creating sequences inside of the Polygrid. Uh, so massive addition that I think uh, just makes a lot of stuff a ton easier to do now. Cool. Lastly, one of the features that are probably less exciting to most people, but I think is a really, really good addition as well, is that they have overhauled the way that this uh, works with your audio interface now. Uh, audio interfaces are now automatically recognized, and the inputs and outputs are automatically named and correctly brought in uh, without much setup to be done at all. It makes a lot of sense. They actually, if you come to the settings here now, uh, I'll take a look. I've currently got my UR28M plugged into this machine. Come down to the audio, it has just uh, renamed everything, it's putting both the, the mono inputs as well as the stereo inputs for everything that's on that card currently. Uh, and they're all available to you now. You can decide which ones are monitors, or which ones are headphone outputs, very simply. Uh, uh, you can favorite certain ones, or you can actually hide them if you need to as well, and hide that bus completely if you never want to use that stereo bus, for example. Uh, and of course, these show up now inside of your routing in Bitwig. So if we go to an audio channel here, yeah, if we come to audio, ins here you go you've got the Yamaha Steinberg USB ACO right here same goes for the audio inputs I've actually got an in instrument channel there if we're gonna look at the audio inputs there it's very quick and easy you can see I've currently got my mic running through channel one uh, so we could grab the mic there very quickly and have that coming through it's a really nice little feature to have um, won't change too much about the way that you do things, but I think it's just this nice quality of life updates as well. Cool, so there you have it. Just a very quick overview of all of the new features inside of Bitwig 5.3. As I said, this is in beta right now. Uh, I doubt that they'll add too many new features before the final release of this, but you can go and check this out right now. Uh, definitely stepwise, great one to play around with, and some of the new modules inside of the grid as well I really, really like uh, in this update. Cool, I'll catch you guys again soon right here at Sonic Academy. Till then, take care. See you then. Ciao.